Okay, hi guys. I'm Andrew Marshall, doing my persuasive speech. Um, I feel the urgent need here to inform you guys, the public, my friends, everybody about vaping. Um, and oh, and and uh, the dangers of cigarettes, the dangers of smoking. So let's talk a little bit about it. Um, <sighs> cigarettes, <coughs> cigarettes. I smoke cigarettes for. Uh, let's see, probably 12 years. Um, I thought I liked it. I thought I loved it. It was, it was great. It was good. Here you go. It was okay. I did it. I did it because whatever. I was addicted. and ended up sucking. Um, then I come to realize I do some research, and cigarettes are bad. Cigarettes are really bad. There's so many chemicals in them. Um, so harmful. I mean, I'm, I'm risking heart attacks and heart lung disease. Um, just everything, just bad. The, the smell, the stink, it, it sucks. Uh, July 1st, um, cigarette prices here in Minnesota, they went up. So I figured I got to do something. So what I did is I went out and I got an e-cigarette. I started noticing around St. Cloud, a lot of these e-cigarette shops popping up. So I jumped in one, threw down like 50, 100 bucks, picked up one, and after 12 years of smoking, I quit. I, since July 1st, I have not had a cigarette. <sighs> Amazing facts about um, not smoking. So July 1st I quit. That is 160 days cigarette free. Super happy, super proud about that. I have not had cigarettes since then. That is $1,250 that I have saved. That's 3,196 cigarettes that I have not smoked. Uh, my smell has improved, my taste has improved like I've said. Uh, I have no risk of coronary heart disease and heart attack. Uh, less than half of that of a smoker. I, I don't have the risk of lung cancer. Um, let's take a vape. Okay, so this is vaping. This is advanced vaping. I mean, they start off like this. These are pretty cool products. This is uh, MVP. It's eye taste. All eye taste products are pretty bulletproof. Uh, this thing can charge your laptop, charge your cell phone. You ever been in class and your cell phone dies and you wish you had a charger? Well, there you go. I mean, so, but don't vape in school. It's becoming an issue. Be respectful about it, but don't smoke cigarettes either. If you're gonna smoke cigarettes, if you are a smoker, I challenge you, I urge you to give vaping a thought. Give it a look, do a little bit of research, try and figure it out. Um, this stuff, it works, it works. It's like a, a cessation. I mean, I've tried the patch, I've tried the nicotine gum, I've tried Chantex, I did not care for Chantex. Um, I've tried it all. I tried the little inhalers. I mean, they, they didn't work. I kept going back to cigarettes. I now vape. Uh, it's e-cigarettes. It's, it's nicotine juice. Um, it works. Um, yeah, like I said, you can charge your phone on These things, they run uh, 50, 60 bucks. You can get the sweet little tanks on them. Um, you can come into any any local shop here in town. They're all over. There's a couple hundred in Minnesota. They will set you up. They will teach you. They will show you through it. Um, everything else. I wonder if this one's on. This one's on. So we can take a vape. Um, I think this is my buddy's do-it-himself banana strawberry. It's, it's pretty good, good stuff. That's all you do, and so I don't smoke cigarettes because of that. Um, there's only like three ingredients in the e-juices, like this. Uh, there's a PG, a pro propyl glycerol, a VG, a vegetable glycerin, uh, all. FDA approved almost uh, USP food grade ingredients safe for you and nicotine and that's the only thing you're getting you're not getting the 4,000 carcinogens uh, cancer causing stuff nasty bad stuff from a cigarette from using e-cigarettes they're totally safe you don't stink up your clothes you don't you don't fill the house full of smoke it doesn't leave grimy film all of your stuff your fingers aren't all yellow and icky and nasty um, it's good. It's good stuff. Uh, let's see. So cigarettes are cancer causing. I talked about that. They, they restrict your blood flow. Cigarettes are bad. Just plain bad. If you smoke cigarettes, you know you have that tug, that urge in you that says, "Ugh, like I should quit." Like I'm telling you, yeah, just quit. Quit smoking cigarettes. Try an e-cigarette. It will get you to get over the edge and stop. Um, how much do these cost? Anywhere from thirty bucks to a hundred bucks. Um, fairly inexpensive with these. They work good. It lets you customize them however you want. If you like glitter, you can get glitter ones. If you like black, you can get black ones. Silver ones, shiny ones, dull ones, whatever kind that you want. 
a million products out there. E-cigarettes is now a multi-billion dollar industry, uh, nationwide, worldwide. Uh, me, myself, I do a lot locally for the vaping. Uh, hang out in the shops, talk to the guys, I'll build stuff, I'll help people talk with stuff. Um, and then uh, you also get on the forums. And I mean, I, I know a few guys, I got a few guys here in the, in the shop today. Um, they're connected through the forums to 10,000, 100,000, a million people uh, worldwide. And just cesspools of knowledge out there on the internet. Just Google it. Um, I actually got a guy that talked to Dr. Robertson, I believe is his name, from the Mayo Clinic. And he is the nicotine addiction specialist. And he agrees that vaping is safe. Um, I will get that cited and submitted. You'll see. Um, is vaping illegal? No, vaping is not illegal. There's a lot of controversy in Minnesota with laws being passed. It's so new. Is vaping good? Is it safe? Is it bad? Um, what does it cost? What does it entail? Is it harmful? No. Is it illegal? No. Some counties, Beltrami County and whatnot, are passing laws. Uh, they're having city council meetings. They're uh, trying to shut down vaping. Basically, what they're doing, we got friends up north that have opened some shops, and you can't test e juices inside their shop, which I feel it's up to the shop owner to um, dictate whether or not you can vape his products, test them inside. If not, like you go up to Duluth or Bemidji, you got to leave your ID at the counter with the guy, you got to go outside in the cold, it's Minnesota, try their stuff, come back inside, buy it. Um, all these people, they have their tobacco license, um, everything, it, it's good to go. Uh, uh, da, 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 da. So but yeah, basically, basically switch, give it a chance, um, give it a look. Uh, I got a buddy here with me, his name's Isaac. Um, you got your list ready? Yeah, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna let him tell you a little bit about him vaping, maybe, if he wants to talk about it, and... <laughs> Um, just some of the chemicals. Just take a good look and listen to the chemicals that are in the cigarettes that you're using, if you use them. If you don't, you know somebody in your family, your mom, your sister, your brother, your aunt, uh, your dad, somebody that smokes cigarettes. And, I mean, they're killing people. I mean, there's millions of deaths a year from cigarettes. Vaping kills nobody. Um, hurts nobody. I mean, it, it's a solid industry. But we got Isaac here chilling in the lounge. We call this Bob's Lounge. The E-Cig Lounge in Way Park. Um, let's hear what he has to say about his list of stuff. What do you got, Isaac? Alright, well, I'm Isaac. I've been vaping since my 18th birthday, um, because I needed to quit smoking because it costs too much and it's just nasty and you stink all the time and I don't like stinking. Um, plus it's hard to pick up the ladies. You're <laughs> right. <laughs> but some of the things that are in cigarettes, I did a little research, whichever, you know, and I don't like cigarettes anymore, and I've been smoke-free, cigarette-free since my 14th, or my 18th birthday on October 14th. So, yes. So, but I mean, some of the things are acetone, uh, jet fuel, yeah, because that's good for you. <laughs> oh, man. Arsenic, <laughs> which is in rat poison. Oh, yeah, let's smoke that. Rubbing alcohol for, no. you know, like your fingernails and stuff, because you're women. Uh, cadmium, which is some bad thing, but <laughs> yeah. I don't know what it is. But Let's it's bad smoke for you. it, right? <laughs> no. uh, ammonia, which is bad and it's used to, you know, clean crap. That's pretty much nasty. Uh, there's benzene, which is also kind of like butane, used in lighter fluid for oh. starting fires and, and gas. Yeah, um, you want to smoke that? No, oh, try vaping. <laughs> And the list goes on. It goes on and on and on and on. There's so much crap. I mean, just just type it in Wikipedia, Google, or whatever, trusted source. Oh, okay, okay, so this is one of the shop owners. Her name is Tammy. Um, <laughs> and so, hi, say hi. Hi. Hi, she's at the, with the East Egg Lounge here. Let's come on. We come on. We'll just run in a video quick. Another shop owner. Awesome guy. So, we're at the lounge. They got a waterfall. They got Christmas trees. They got bunnies. Say hi. Oh, they know me. They like me up in here. What up, Rusty? How's it going? Free Wi-Fi. Fireplaces. We're all sitting around chilling, making jewelries. You know, chilling. The man behind is a weirdo. I'm weird. Christmas trees. You know, this lady, she does a lot for us. Thank you. Um, we got customers. Everybody buying. Everybody chatting stuff up. I mean, they got, they got juices. Come try it out. Full zero nicotine juice bar. So, right there, must be 18 year olds to test. Water, coffee, 
Nice flavors. Nice stuff going on. This is the other owner. This is my guy, Benny. I love this man. He's amazing. But got some good products. I mean, these things are fairly inexpensive. And, you know, for just a couple bucks, you can pick them up and get your vape on and quit smoking cigarettes, you know. And we all hang out. It's all good. It's totally safe. I will try and get... Hold on. You should uh, tell me about your buddy, the nicotine specialist, down in the cities, in the mail. Yeah, you want to? Or was I gonna edit it in? Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'll I'll, I'll cut it, chop it, edit it in. Sweet. Okay. Other than that, though, in conclusion, I mean, you know, you gotta you gotta not smoke cigarettes. You know, cigarettes are dead. Vaping is in. For sure. Benny, how long have you been smoke free? Uh, a little over four months. Haven't picked up another cigarette. That's amazing. Love it. I started at 24 milligrams of uh, nicotine, dropped down to 16. Now I'm vaping eight. Awesome. So, awesome. So then you can he can he can work himself off. He used the e juices and the nicotine in them, and that's it, and not all them other carcinogens to get off of cigarettes, and he can drop himself down and quit, and that's what we highly suggest. And anything else? No. No, I'm cool. I'm just glad to be smoke free and vaping on. Yes. Yes. Amazing. Okay. So I got my good friend, good guy, actually like the kind of supreme overlord of the whole vaping thing in Minnesota. He does a lot um, for e-cigarettes um, statewide, citywide. You're from Minneapolis. Correct. Um, and actually I see him on the forums and everything too. So he's, he's nationwide. He's worldwide. Um, Highly advanced, uh, very knowledgeable, and I mean, uh, people listen to this man and respect him and everything. Um, um, but I don't know how long have you been smoke free? Um, coming up on a year. Um, nice. I, my first attempt was in uh, 2008, and it failed uh, because we didn't have local shops to go to to purchase the devices and stuff like that. So everything you bought had to come from China. Oh. So if you had something to break, you had to wait weeks to get it delivered. And now with all the, the explosion of shops in the cities, uh, it's much easier to go out and get what you need. So yes. If you have something go wrong, you just can, walk right in. Right, right. Boom, they take and, care uh, of it. That was really the key to my success this time. Yes. Was that, that was available to me. So you don't have the same risk that you used to. Right. How many shops are there in Minnesota, maybe, do you think? Uh, we're approaching 50. Woohoo! Nice. Lot, so basically, you could drive anywhere and run yeah, into an e yeah. shop. Um, from, really from Bermidji all the way down to Rochester. Wow. Their so the shops. whole state's covered. Yep, yep. So, and they've been opening up now since the price of cigarettes went up. Uh, uh, July 1st. I've kind of noted, well, I, that's when I started. Baby. Yeah, it's... You know, prices went up. I needed to go get one. I noticed them coming around, and, and I'm blessed to have them here there in Minnesota. Was a, there was a huge explosion of popularity uh, prior to the tax increase. Um, people are just realizing that smoking is going to kill them. Yes. There's no... Yes, as no we talked about. There's no dispute that yep. tobacco delivered through a cigarette kills you. Yes, um, heck, don't do it. Every study that we have that goes back all the way to 1942 s proves that these are, in fact, safe. Yes. Dare I say safe. <laughs> yes, um, they are. But at least much, much safer than uh, cigarettes. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, yeah, so much more. So there's a lot of... There's a lot of rhetoric floating around yep. um, about how there's no long-term research. You know, the, yeah, the studies that. haven't been done. Yeah. Uh, but the original propylene glycol has been tested since 1942. Yeah, I used as a I seen that. In yes, hospitals. yes, it's actually the ingredient in uh, inhalers. One inhalers. of the main ingredients. And I seen there was a doctor, doctor something out of Chicago. And he did a test. Oh, he took yep. some Dr. Robertson, um, Dr. something like that. Doctor, I think it was Dr. Robertson. Easily Googleable. Uh, maybe I can find it, link it, cite it. 
But uh, yeah, he took some lab rats and he took some lab rats. He put them in a box. He took some PG, which is commonly found in the e juice, and he misted it over the lab rats. And then he hit them with the needle. No, bad prop. Um, hit them with the needle, and the rat survived. Then he took another s section chunk of rats, group of rats. He didn't miss them with the PG, and he shot them with the influenza, and they all died. Um, it's right. Crazy. So I mean, it's safe for you. It's actually, you know, I have students. They they ask me, um, you know, oh, the secondhand vape and stuff. Is that going to hurt me? You know, my little niece. If I start vaping, I want to get off cigarettes. Um, but I have a niece or a sister or a kid, and they have asthma. Is it going to hurt them? Actually, it would help them because it's the same ingredient found in um, inhalers. Is well, what I had to come to figure out. To find. Right. And yes. Right. Okay. That that same doctor. What he, what he was in search of was. When there was an upper respiratory virus, um, influenza, for example, yep. it would go epidemic in a hospital and spread like wild. Yes, yes, it does. And so they, he wanted to come up with a way to purify air that didn't uh, hurt people. Okay. Um, and every chemical that he had tried prior, uh, people had irritations. Uh, they, cough and it was basically toxic. Oh god. He discovered propylene glycol and started using that and he noticed that no one was being irritated by it. It wasn't causing issues. It wasn't toxic and it did in fact purify the air and kill the influenza virus. Nice. Um, so it was adopted as a air purifying method in hospitals. Yes. So By doctors. By the FDA. Right. Yes. And so oh, yeah. to to point the finger at propylene glycol and say that long-term research hasn't been done is, yeah. is False. rhetoric. Yes. Um, in addition to that, so we false. have all these studies that have come out in the last four years, oh, specifically yeah. on e-cigarettes, yep. that have all come to the same conclusion that the secondhand vapor is not toxic, nor does it pose a risk to human health. Right, not at all. And it, it's also safe. Yes. Um, the there have been studies where they've found trace amounts of, you know, formaldehyde and whatever. I heard that. I read that. Yeah. And, <laughs> and it was, was... What happened was yeah, the FDA yeah. did that, did that research, and they were using atomizers from China that no one used yeah. and are no longer available. But even the cheapest stuff that they found and tested still only produced trace, trace, trace amounts of so these toxic chemicals um, that... The amounts that they found were actually lower than what's in normal everyday air. Right. So, so if I go across the street to the gas station or the restaurant, I use the bathroom and I wash my hands, I could probably pick up more formaldehyde than I would from that one tank that came from China that's discontinued. Right. That they that the whatever studies are saying has right. all this formaldehyde in it and it's bad for you. No. Right. Don't listen to and it. And that was the only study where anything has ever been found. Every other yes. study that's been done has not found that. There it um, is. And the most comprehensive study ever done was just released in September. Okay. And they tested 9,000 different samples. Okay. And found nothing. There was nice. No, nice. The toxicity levels were so low that they were unmeasurable. Cool. Cool. Um, and so, again, to say that the research hasn't been done, blah, 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 is it's misinformed. It's, it's Absolutely. Not the case. Absolutely. Um, and essentially, you had mentioned the advocacy group. What we're trying yes, to do is yes. educate politicians and city councils and let them know that this is the silver bullet that they've been looking for <laughs> to get that remaining 30% of smokers to quit smoking. Yes. Um, that's the number that they always go off of is okay. how do we get that remaining 30% of smokers to quit smoking? Because e cigarettes, right? Exactly. They everyone's tried Chantex. Yep, and, I spoke on that. I tried Chantex, right? No, didn't work, and none of it works. No. The and there's huge side effects to it. Well, right, how many side, side effects have you had to vaping? None. I I was in the <laughs> panel discussion with Dr. Kurt, okay, of, he's a nicotine addiction specialist, okay, at the Mayo Clinic, and he said, Well, these haven't gone through the same rigorous research studies that. You know, yeah. these pharmaceutical ones have. And I posed the question to him, you know, has Chantex gone through the same rigorous <laughs> testing method? Big fail. Yeah, well, <laughs> I would assume that if it had, 
and it had been researched for a long period of time, they may have found that people that take Chantex get suicidal and homicidal tendencies. Yes, I know, I know people that have committed suicide because of taking Chantex, right. tried to stop right. smoking in my immediate family. Right. Yes. So to say that that is safer and FDA approved, yep. whereas this isn't, is, I don't understand That's how it works. And the other thing is... So we're trying to change that. Well, right. But the other thing is, Dr. Hurt, he prescribes Chantex. Yeah. Knowing these side effects. He's got to because he wants people off cigarettes because they're so bad. Sure. I guess. Right. It's a roll of the dice. But, I mean, let's give people a blister pack of e-cigarette. Yeah. Try that. Yeah. Go home, try that. Oh, that's Stop good. into your local shop and pick one up. It's going to work. It's so much cheaper than patches. Cheaper if, than cigarettes. If mm, e-cigarettes aren't safe, yeah. why does Pfizer sell an e-cigarette that's yeah. FDA approved? Right. It can... If Nicotrol is an e-cigarette, yep. it contains yep. the same... That's a little inhaler thing that you yep. guys have all tried. And it contains nicotine liquid yep. suspended in a propylene glycol base. Boom, that's an e-cigarette. It's an e-cigarette. Yep. Uh, that is FDA approved um, and sold by Pfizer. Well, of course Pfizer doesn't want to see an e-cigarette succeed. Because it's going to take money out of their competition market. with one of their products. Exactly. So if you look at like the American Lung Association, who gets 158 million dollars a year in grant money from Pfizer well, to use there's the answer. in anti-smoking campaigns, yeah, you start to connect the dots as to why maybe the American Lung Association doesn't like e-cigarettes. Which I've seen. Right. Beltrami City Council meeting. Right. Representative exactly. came up. I've seen it. I sat at home, watched that for an hour. Right. Yeah. Essentially, the American Lung Association has turned into a lobbyist organization for Pfizer. Okay. Okay. And that's really what it boils down to. Yeah. Um, the funny thing is, though, is that when the American Lung Association comes to these meetings to dispute the safety of an e-cigarette, they have no research to go on to back up their claims yep. because none exists. Yep. Um, they often quote the, I think it's the 2008 FDA study where they okay. found those trace elements. Of oh, they're holding on to that one. Right. Like, oh, we got them. Right. We got it. Yeah. So no. yes, it's possible <laughs> that they do have some toxicity right. in some atomizers. So but if minute. you look at the amounts that yes. in them, it's. It's a ridiculous argument to make. Basically. And I read some of them reports, and they were like 25, 30 pages long, and they were super dry, right. put you to sleep, and it's all crazy, like physics, like millimeter per cubic, or, or you know, whatever particles, or millions, yeah, right. per yep. cubic, and it's all, you know, European, and you know. Really, um, and I think that's part of the problem that we face. Yeah, getting some lame politicians terms. to read. Um, is that they are scientific documents. You yeah. know, it is. Yeah. If you're not a scientist, scientist right. to decide from. In every one of the research studies, there's their key conclusions, yep. which is written in layman's terms. Yep. The National Institute of Health, their, okay. their con key conclusion, and it specifically states, e-cigarettes pose no risk to human health. Boom, and there it is. It's clear as day. You cannot read that and misinterpret it. Oh, no, yes. And the, that comprehensive study from Igor Bergstein, okay. um, that one concludes the same thing. Is they tested 9,000 different samples. Wow. And the key conclusions are these pose no human health risk. Awesome. And awesome. I think so, I'm going to go get an e-cigarette. Get yeah, off cigarettes. <laughs> and the FDA can't produce anything that you know, contradicts what's already been found. Right. And right. so, you know, we have this silver bullet that is proven to get people out of smoking. It, the current estimates are about 38% of people okay. that try e-cigarettes quit smoking. Nice. In comparison to the gum and patches and the Chantex and Nicotrol, those are at about 8%. Wow. So you're looking wow. at an initial 30% success rate in cessation. That's huge. <laughs> um, and it's it gonna, works. Yeah, the more wow. advanced these get and the more available they are, more people are going to oh, yeah. convert to them. Oh, yeah. The more people... Huge see industry. Me vaping at a bar. Yep. 
who have just got in from the 20 below degree outside yeah, area. Downtown Minneapolis. Yeah, because they have a yes. smoke. They see me doing this in the bar and go, you know. Solution. I'm going to give this a try. <laughs> yeah. And 38% of those people that try it switch. Awesome. And it's, you know, it's not. A lot of people point at the tax as being the reason why. Okay. And, you know, that's fair. A lot of them have okay. switched because it's cheaper, but ultimately, I think what it comes down Health to... Health, too. Yeah. I mean, you know. people that smoke wake up in the morning hacking up their lungs. I did. They feel like crap, and yep. they don't want to feel that way anymore. Right. And they know that... Yeah, at some inside point, I had that tugging. I knew right, I had to quit. Right. I just none of none of them other products right. out there were doing it for and me. And that's how I switched was I got an upper respiratory infection that didn't okay. go away. But I was too afraid to go to the doctor <laughs> yeah. because I was afraid of what he was gonna tell me. I didn't yeah. really get that CAT scan yep. or X ray and yep. find out that there's a mass in my lung. Right. And, and you like, have the cancer. Right. And yeah. so that triggered something in me to go, you know what, I'm smarter than this. Yes. I I know that this is going to kill me, but every day I choose to do it. Right. I'm going to try these cigarettes again. And yep. this time again, because of all the shops and the availability yeah. and the increase in the technology, it was a breeze to switch. Yeah, so it was so nice. I dropped down 50, 60 bucks, and I was off to yeah. the races. Right. And going and it worked and I tried it years ago and it, 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 it didn't it didn't do it for me you and, know and now that the technology has came across exactly you'll hear everybody say that and your ability to come into a shop like this so easy and walk up to the counter and have eighty different flavor choices yeah makes that switch easier you, yes. know, you can walk in here have someone show you how to do everything yep. and yep. be like here's eighty different flavors that you can sample yep. to find out what suits you best is huge to the overall Amazing. success of making yep. that switch. And a lot of these cities and stuff are looking at banning vaping in no. the vape shop. Right. Which doesn't make any sense. No. And I, I don't understand it. And I don't understand why a city or state would want to ban something that's never been proven harmful. Right. And everything that we have says the exact opposite, that it's not harmful. Um, so it sounds like we have like a call to action here too or something. So if you know a politician or a legislator, write them a letter, send them an email. If your dad's a lawyer or something, yes, like shoot yeah. some letters out there. I see it on the forums. I see it citywide, statewide. It's affecting, you know, hugely and, 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 and vaping, it works. I mean, it's saving lives. I see 60 year olds in here. I could yeah. go out outside over here to the shop and show you multiple older men and women that have switched after multiple tens and twenty years of smoking. Well, and that's the you big know, thing. And, like, and it's saving their life. It, they're not going to have coronary heart disease, right. lung cancer. I have countless testimonies from people that yes. like, I smoked for 65 years, Yeah. and I switched the same day that I got my e-cigarette. It's yeah. like, how many other products have you tested over the that's, 65 years yeah. that didn't work for you? And right. then you try this, and boom, done. I mean, yes. that's that's amazing. Right? Yeah, it is. That's that's pure awesome. If there was a patch that did that, yeah, whoever, hundred bucks a patch. Yeah, whoever made that patch, then you could quit smoking. Would it would be an unbelievable yeah. profit from that yeah. patch? But that patch doesn't exist, right? Because nic and this was one thing that surprised me with Doctor Hurt. If he's a nicotine addiction specialist, yeah. he yeah. should understand the vast reasons as to what makes a cigarette addictive. Okay. It's not just the nicotine. No, it's everything else you're getting right. too. Uh, it's the lack of blood through your arteries well, getting to your heart and lack of oxygen to your brain. That, well, uh, and there's uh, a, there's you know, research and, out there that says that the physical addiction to nicotine only lasts 72 hours. Right, right. And yep, I've read that. So that tells me that after three days without a cigarette, yep. you should not want a cigarette anymore if it's just the nicotine. It has to be something else. Right. So... If, it takes weeks, months to try and kick a oh, cigarette, yeah. and then you, and then you end up right back to it. Right. Yep. And so, and it's so hard. It's the one of the hardest thing a man has to do. Absolutely. A person. Yeah. And these replace all elements of smoking. Oh. And that's right why now. they're successful because yeah. nicotrol doesn't work because even though I'm inhaling like I do a cigarette, yep. And I'm getting nicotine like I do a cigarette. Yep. I'm not exhaling vapor or smoke, which yep. is a huge piece of smoking. Yep. And it's 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 unfortunate that that's not realized by non-smokers. That I'm sorry, but the exhale of smoke is a satisfying feeling yep. that's important 
to a smoker. Yep, it's one of the elements that you need there. Right, Absolutely. and so with knee control, Absolutely. which doesn't produce that, yep. you're missing an element, and these produce that. And so that's part of why they're successful. Cool. Um, and so we just want to see states make common sense legislation that yes we don't want to sell this to kids no no absolutely kids not no kids them. under 18 right. i showed them the sign must be 18 yeah. you're carded yeah everything else absolutely and that's our goal is to find states please regulate whatever you need to regulate yes. to keep these out of the hands of minors i get that. yeah don't but think about, about the, the older people smokers. yeah because yes they're the ones that we need to target are the smokers absolutely um, and there's all sorts of stuff about how these flavors appeal to children. It's like, oh, boo. there's Fruit Loop Vodka. Yeah, how is, and, and that doesn't appeal to your kid? Right. How is that any less appealing to a child Absolutely. than a strawberry liquid? F flavored liquid, right. right. And, and I know it's crazy, but strawberries, or adults like fruit. Yeah, no, like, I never thought I'd be a fruity vapor, right. and, and I am. I like Absolutely. the fruits. Right, because you realize that tobacco... Tastes yeah. like good. Whereas you can get something right. that tastes like a strawberry daiquiri. Oh my god, and you get your nicotine. Right. You can get off cigarettes. Pancake, you know? Yes. And so yes, while those flavors may appeal to children, yep. they also appeal to adults. So really what it is is that yes. these flavors appeal to humans. Yep. I mean There it is. And uh, you know, the other thing is I've heard Clearway made a, a public statement that okay. said that Adults would never want to vape uh, strawberry. Would you ever want to vape a strawberry, Matt? Yes, I do. <laughs> yeah, I do too. I um, just vaped a strawberry for them on camera. That right. was a strawberry banana and DIY. This is, this is blueberry. And, and there's a blueberry pancake right there, and it's amazing right. stuff. And you can go to your store, each local e-cigarette store, and pick it up. Right, and it's so good for, stuff. It's safe for them to say that those flavors would never appeal to an adult. I would ask them to then question why UV vodka is so uh, popular with adults with all of their there you flavors. Go. And I would also make the argument that, okay, while these flavors may appeal to kids and they may pick it up as a result of their availability, yep. my argument would be, is alcohol maybe more damaging to oh, yeah. people than... How many deaths are there? Let's go Google how many deaths there are from alcohol and related accidents and crime and everything else. Thousands, oh my God. Thousands, yeah. Thousands. In fact, there's a <laughs> CDC study about Rochester that yeah. talks about the ridiculously high amount of youth deaths related to Which is sad. That sucks. Right. And so, to make the argument that these flavors appeal to kids is, is yeah. ignorant. Yes, um, absolutely. And Blatantly I've, ignorant. And I've seen that argument die a little bit, but it's still nice. out there. And it's, it's yeah, people hold on to that. Go to your liquor store. Yep. <laughs> look at, look yep. at the flavors. Yep. Walk around there once. Right. See what's in there. And, uh, you know, they they talk about, oh, well, if the parents vape, the kids could get their hands on it. Okay. The parents True. have alcohol in their liquor cabinet. There, there the kids go. Kids could get their hands yep. on it. You know, this is, there's no way to regulate it in a way that kids will never get their hands on something. Yeah. You know, kids get their hands on guns. They get their hands they get, on alcohol. They do. Kids drive cars when they don't yep. have a driver's license. Yeah. We, we can't run the world on the, oh, think about the kids, because yep. it doesn't work. Yep. Kids are going to be kids. Yep. Um, and unofficially, my opinion on the subject, yep. and I have a daughter. There you go. And going into her teen years. Okay. If... If I had to make the choice, I would prefer that she pick up an e-cigarette than pick up a cigarette. Because at the end of the day, that e-cigarette is not going to kill her. Right. It may lead to a nicotine addiction, but Starbucks leads to a caffeine addiction. There you go. Um, and at the end of the day, nicotine and caffeine are both stimulants that have yep. the same yep. effect on the human body. Yep. And so to point the finger at one as being worse than the other doesn't really work. Doesn't um, I don't buy it in my book. Well, and nicotine is a, a naturally occurring substance yep. that is yep. produced in vegetables. Eggplant is the second highest yielding nicotine okay. vegetable or plant that there is. The first okay. being the tobacco yep. plant, the second being eggplant. 
So, if you're feeding your kids eggplant, you're giving them nicotine. Yeah, yeah, Plain I know. Simple. So, now they're going to grow to nicotine Bobby, addiction. Bobby, eat your vegetables. <laughs> giving them nicotine. Yeah, there it is. And uh, the funny thing is, though, is that eggplant doesn't lead to a nicotine addiction. I mean, yeah. them eating vegetables doesn't lead to a nicotine addiction. Um, so, I, I, I think more people just need to educate themselves on the subject. Right. Especially if With, they're in a position of making laws and regulations and ordinances that affect this. Right. You know. And with just using the nicotine too, if somebody was exposed to it, you know, I don't think it's going to be as hard if they quit, stop using nicotine. They're not going to go curl up in a corner for days or something, no. going through nicotine withdrawals no. or whatever. They would just, 72 hours past, they're done, moving on with their life. Right. It's not going to be like trying to come off packs of cigarettes. Yeah, if, if, we're, if it were that easy, we would have a lot fewer smokers. Oh, yeah. Smokers found out that smoking kills you. Yeah. Um, Hundreds of thousands of millions of people die from smoking. Yeah, it's... And so much money spent on it. It's... Uh, what, I forget the last number that I saw. I just seen a number too. Not it's that like long five ago. million it was, people a year. Or it was die from. It was crazy. Smoking. And uh, ironically, e-cigarettes had, were originally patented in like 1962. I think. Okay. I think. Okay. Um, not a single death from e-cigarettes. No deaths. No deaths. Not that ever. Wherever. What? Ever ever ban them? No. no. Right. Um, so, to look at something that has a confirmed kill rate of 5 million a year or whatever it is, yeah. versus a product that has zero, yeah. to regulate product B the same way that you regulate product A, logically doesn't make sense to me, and I don't understand how it doesn't make sense to those that are in the position of making these laws. I mean, for my simple head, <laughs> yeah, I go... Right. Hmm. Whoa, whoa, we got to do you something. shouldn't regulate these. Yeah. And, you know, make sure they can't sell the miners and just kind of let them do their thing. Absolutely. And, and uh, you know, as far as the bars and the restaurants, I know this is crazy. <laughs> but maybe yeah. what we do is we let the owners of the bars and the restaurants... As I said. ...decide if they want to allow vapor. Oh, vapor my God. No. no I know way. it's nuts. <laughs> But uh, why yeah. is that such a bad thing that a business yeah. owner would be able to choose whether or not he wants they something to come like in this and vape to use in his establishment? Yeah. I, mean, I don't. I don't understand it. We. Uh, I mean, I get the Freedom to Breathe Act and yep, uh, Clean Air Indoor Act yeah, and stuff, I, and this doesn't even fall under the Clean Air Indoor Act as far as no. far as I understand. No, right, no. it doesn't even qualify for that. Uh, Phyllis so, Kahn, but out of respect, we don't. Oh, okay, yeah. Well, Phyllis Kahn in the next legislative se uh, session, she's going to uh, propose that a uh, amendment to the Freedom to Breathe Act okay. that these fall under it, which yep. essentially means that you wouldn't even be able to vape in a vape shop. Uh, which means yeah. that your ability to come into a shop like this and sample flavors yeah. or test devices wouldn't exist. So what do you do? Leave your ID at the counter, go outside in a, what is it, negative, like, with the wind chill, it's like 35 below out today. And Let's actually, go outside and get frostbite so we can pick up some e-juice to get off cigarettes. And no. Actually there's a, I'm going to come inside where it's warm by the fireplace. There's a kiosk in a mall in Rochester okay. where that's exactly what they do. If nice. People come in, they leave their driver's license and have to go outside okay. the parking lot oh. to sample. No and way. it's like, okay, do you really want 30 customers yeah. standing outside a mall in a parking lot vaping? That, to me, sounds like more of a health risk 